hey, what's up? Gleb Alexandrov here with a new tutorial from the hard surface modeling for Blender 2.80 series. Today I want to get you folks acquainted with mirroring in Blender, uh, namely with the mirror modifier, but also with mirroring in general as a concept. If you look around or just type hard surface on art station, you will notice that pretty much all mechanical designs are symmetrical. And no surprises, because it's a standard practice in hard surface modeling. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier, because you just have to model uh, half of the mesh, and that means that you will probably spend half of the time modeling it. Isn't that great? Basically, mirroring is considered to be one of the best practices in modeling in general. And if you think about it, it makes sense, because each object in your model can be symmetrical, and uh, it really adds up when you have a lot of objects. So yeah, in this video we're gonna be taking a look at the mirror modifier mostly, and its 2.80 plus capabilities, uh, but mirroring and symmetry is much more than that, it's an integral part of the workflow. Let's get started with the basics of the mirror tools available in Blender. Here's the companion cube, uh, our test dummy. Let's make it a little bit more interesting and I guess asymmetrical by beveling this edge, something like that. And in the modifier, we're gonna be taking a look at the mirror pretty soon, but first let's take a look at the uh, basic modeling tools related to symmetry and mirror. So we can select all vertices, right click and go mirror, interactive mirror. At the bottom of the screen you will see a bunch of commands uh, that we can use to specify the direction of the mirroring operation and so on. So by pressing X, Y, Z and other hotkeys we can control the settings of this operation. And if you want to use the 3D cursor as the mirror operation origin, we can select it over here at the top menu, at the pivot point menu, just switch it over to 3D cursor then I'm going to go Shift D to duplicate the object and um, right click, mirror vertices, interactive mirror, or just press Ctrl M hotkey. So, yeah, that's probably the quickest way to do the mirroring operations in the edit mode, but there are different ways. Let's take a look at the symmetrize tool. I'm going to select all vertices, go mesh, symmetrize. What this command does is that it removes the half of the mesh along a certain axis and it duplicates the part of the mesh to the other side, defined in the direction menu, so we can go from plus y to minus y, and so on. So practically that's kind of a bisect operation, coupled with the mirror operation, and it uses the object origin as the origin for slicing. And yet another tool that I quickly wanted to mention is bisect. We can find it in the mesh menu, Basically, after after activating the tool, we have to define the slicing plane. And spoiler alert, the new mirror modifier of 2.80 and above has the bisect built in. So it's kind of important to understand how this command works. Personally, I think that the non-destructive tools like modifiers give you uh, give you certain freedom to change your mind. Uh, to change the axis of the symmetrize or bisect or mirroring effects. That's why I use it a little bit more often than the modeling operations in the edit mode related to these tools. But that boils down to personal preference as usual. Okay, so what settings do we have? Let's add companion cube. This time it's a lipstick red cube. You will love it. Let's make it slightly more yeah, asymmetrical once again, because if we mirror the already absolutely symmetrical cube, what will we get? So I'm going to hop into the modifiers tab and just select mirror. Um, we will see a bunch of options right away. First, first of all, we can change axis or rather the direction. There are rumors that axis means slightly different thing. It's rather direction of the mirror effect. Anyway, we can mirror it on the Y, X and Z axis, or multiple axes at the time, so we're not limited to just one. Now I'm grabbing the object in the edit mode, I'm sliding it a little bit on, on X uh, to make sure it doesn't overlap itself, because initially the origin point was placed at the dead center of the mesh, and origin is used as the origin of the mirror effect as well. 
So if you see something like that, an overlapping mesh after using mirror effect, uh, the cause of this is probably the misplaced origin. And it can get out of control pretty fast, especially if you use uh, multiple axes like that. It's just an overlapping mess. Usually I try to keep it pretty simple and work with one axis at the time. Uh, okay, let's slide the parts of the mesh away from each other uh, and to create a little bit of a gap in between, something like that. Within the modifier settings we have the clipping checkbox. Once activated it prevents us from pushing uh, the geometry over this imaginary line or rather the mirror plane, so we cannot create the overlapping geometry this way. So probably it's recommended to just turn it on and keep it on. And on top of that we also have the merge checkbox activated, so if we slam the parts of the geometry into each other and close the gap, this part of the mesh will be merged. But now the, this interior face is stuck, let's disable clipping to be able to slide it back ever so slightly and I will get rid of this interior face because uh, that will cause us a problem. So just let's press X and delete this interior face because even though the vertices will be merged uh, the face will still linger. Okay so now let's enable the merge and uh, clipping checkboxes back and grab the vertices on the Y axis to, so they meet and because the merge setting is activated they will be merged and we can prove that it's now a solid mesh a watertight mesh by uh, by adding the subdivision surface modifier so if you give it a few more subdivisions or just enable smooth shading we, we will prove that it's uh, it's a singular object in fact but what will happen if we uncheck merge see this seam we won't be able to exercise this unholy thing from our mesh without uh, turning merge to on and one more thing that I wanted to mention is uh, the merge limit setting. Mm -hmm. Let's disable merge for the moment. And ha! Ah, in order to actually to be able to slide these vertices away, uh, we need to disable clipping as well. Okay, I'm grabbing this and moving it a little bit. And now look at this. Now uh, the merge limit slider controls how far this stitching effect will spread. Uh, if you push it way too hard, uh, it will start dissolving the useful polygons. That's not something that we would like to happen, so it's always better to keep it at bare minimum. And now we can go over the exciting stuff, which is bisect option. Uh, this is a new thing. Basically, it works just like the symmetry rise uh, command. It kills the part of the mesh entirely and then copies the other parts to the other side and it stitches it all together. To demo how it works, uh, let's actually fall back and recreate this inner face, which will be so so problematic without the bisect option. And now look at this. Yeah, we created the overlapping objects, uh, the object that penetrates itself on a certain axis and uh, after pressing bisect, and actually after flipping it to the opposite side we will see that now the mesh is watertight no non-manifold geometry present uh, no inner faces basically it's a good solid mesh uh, let's prove that it actually works like it works by applying the modifier selecting the edge loop and yeah no overlapping stuff at all and what's even more important, no interior faces. So the bisect option really handles it for us. I think it's a great addition to this modifier. It just opens up a whole new ways of utilizing mirror. And obviously it can work with more than one axis at the time. So here you can see the Z fighting. The phenomenon that happens when two polygons occupy the exact same space. And after checking bisect, we just clean it up. Once again, it works just like the symmetrize operation, but in a non-destructive way. And if you really want to see that seam running across the central portion of the mesh, uh, you can tweak the, the overlay settings, namely the wireframe settings, just push it all the way to one. 
because if it's a little bit lower, Blender will just hide the edges that don't contribute to the curvature changes in the mesh, something like that. I, I find it useful to set it to one to be able to just debug the mesh, see what's going on. All right, awesome. So now with the addition of the bisect option, uh, this modifier that was actually super powerful became 10 times as powerful. It's unbelievable how far you can push it. And at all times we have access to the original mesh. We can disable the cage to be able to actually see it. Um, but personally, I find it a little bit hard to see what's what's going on uh, when uh, when the cage is turned off. You know, it's just a little bit hard to visualize uh, the mirroring matrix without actually seeing it on screen. Uh, so I find it a, a little bit more comfortable to just enable the cage and see the final result as it happens. So here we go. Now it's a little bit less abstract. On a side note, mirroring is useful for testing out different ideas, even when you're not exactly sure what, what do you want to do with it. Uh, you can just play with multiple axes, symmetry and stuff like that, and see what happens. And we're not limited to one mirror modifier, we can have two or more. Uh, uh, yeah, it will get slightly more complicated. But at the same time, uh, it opens up the opportunities for uh, testing different designs quickly. So now when we have two mirror modifiers, let's talk about one very powerful feature called mirror object. Every kind of object can serve as the mirror object, so I will just create the empty object, position it slightly above the mesh, and you can change the display style and the size of it in the empty settings, and in the mirror modifier I'll just click on the eye picker and select this empty. Now our second mirror modifier will ignore the origin of the object itself and will use the empty object as the origin for mirroring. We can do very interesting things with that kind of setup. But first uh, let's check the bisect on X. And what you can do now is kind of extrude or on the contrary shrink the object. It may happen on, on, on different axes. Let's enable Y and bisect as well. Maybe let's flip the Y axis. Now we can extend it like that. And we are not limited at keeping everything in one piece. So we can use 3D cursor to, uh, to rotate the empty object like that. To position this part of the mesh on the other side of the imaginary mirror plane. And because we have bisect checked, we can just slam it into one another and create a picture frame. It's a versatile instrument, you know. Feel free to follow along, by the way. It's always best when you can just uh, try it yourself. All right, what I also wanted to pinpoint really quickly is the use of mirror in the Boolean operations. Here I'm pressing Ctrl C to copy the mirror modifier from the active object to the selected one. So now we have a bunch of Boolean meshes pre-computed for the Boolean operation. The rest is just a matter of adding the Boolean modifier. And we are good to go. We can scale it up a little bit to punch a bunch of holes. But actually we can do it the other way around. First, I'm gonna get rid of the Boolean modifier and try slightly different tactics. Now it's gone. So basically, we can go ahead and just uh, apply the Boolean operation first and then mirror, uh, the, mirror the holes to the other side. Not that is much more optimal than the previous method of doing it, but it may work in your situation, so why not? Just make sure to maintain the right modifier order by looking at the stack. For example, after applying a few more boolean subtract operations, and if you actually want uh, this hole to be transferred to the other side of the mesh, uh, just, just make sure that the mirror modifier stays the last one in the stack. It will be alright. Bam, bam, bam. But how to transpose the mesh? Uh, actually, it's a little bit tricky. You have to select all the objects, including the mirror object. And then you can just grab and move it. To make our life a little bit easier, I would propose 
to duplicate the empty object, maybe change the look of it to not accidentally mistake it with the mirror one. It's just principles of good design. Uh, let's set it to arrows. And the point is, we can just parent everything to this newly created empty object and move this new empty object instead of moving everything. So select everything and go right click, parent object, and it will parent everything to the active object, to the last one selected. And now we can easily translate this bunch of objects around, rotate it, or even scale it, no problem whatsoever. So that's kind of a hack that helps to deal with the complex groupings of objects that involve uh, multiple mirror modifiers, so I hope it's helpful. Yet another cool thing that we can do with mirror, as AD showed us in the original hard surface modeling video course, is kind of a mirror slice operation. First, I'm gonna add the mirror modifier to this cylinder, and basically we have two cylinders, one on top of the other, uh, because the mirror axis is set to X, uh, is basically a virtual geometry on top of the real one. Then I'm going to create a plane that will serve as a slicing plane. And position it roughly like that. And uh, selecting the original object and adding the boolean modifier with uh, these objects selected as the boolean object. The operation is different. But nothing actually happened, because we need to add some thickness to the slicing plane. In this version of Blender there is no way of utilizing planes as boolean objects. So here we go, I set the display mode for, for this object to bounce, to see through, and we can start slicing the cylindrical mesh, like this. 45 degrees angle works best, and uh, let's select it as the mirror object. Now the magic happens. But first, I guess we need to pop the z-axis in, like that. And lastly, uh, the modifier stack should be put into slightly different order. I mean, the mirror modifier should be the last one. So let's move it to the bottom of the stack. And as you can see, that's a really easy way of creating the manual pipe elbow. Now we can just grab the mirror object which is the boolean object at the same time, and just rotate it. Probably it has an interior face where two objects meet, so you have to apply all the modifiers and delete this face. Nevertheless, it's a cool, cool method. Let's now talk about troubleshooting mirroring issues in Blender. If you feel particularly adventurous with uh, combining different modifiers and working procedurally, you will find yourself in all kinds of strange situations, and some of them can actually be resolved by fixing the position of the mirror modifier in the modifier stack, or something like that. Let's talk about it. So here is a typical situation. You carved a lot of Boolean shapes, uh, so how to transfer it to the opposite side of the model? Uh, there are different ways of approaching this problem, as we've already mentioned. The first one is uh, to mirror the boolean objects, and not the mesh data. Let's start off by creating the empty object precisely at the center of this model. Mm-hmm, that's right, we will use it as the mirror origin. So now I, I will select all the boolean objects one by one, shift click on them, Go over to the Modifiers tab, add mirror. What we can do next is click on the eyedropper icon and uh, then click on the empty object that we have created. Choose the right axis, which is Y in this case, and Ctrl C and copy this modifier to all other Boolean objects. In order for this Ctrl C stuff to work, the copy attributes add-on should be turned on in the user preferences. So that's how we moved all the changes to the opposite side of the mesh. That was easy. Okay, another problem that we may come across is that uh, strange kind of seam. I'm pressing Alt Z to allow some light to pass through the mesh, so we can see that we have an interior face there. And chances are there will be no practical way to fix it, 
aside from just deleting it manually in the edit mode, uh, no way we can fix it just by moving the modifiers around. It won't really cut it. But now when we know the origin of this problem, we can, we can do it manually. Let's delete the mirror modifier, tab into the edit mode, press X and delete this face. Obviously the model went haywire because boolean modifier doesn't really like non-manifold geometry. And from here we have a few ways to proceed. First of all we can add the solidify modifier and hope that it can help to partially solve the issue. But actually no chance, not in this case. We still cannot mirror the mesh to the other side without producing a seam. Or at least we couldn't do it. Because probably now we can. Uh, we just have to utilize the power of the 280 plus uh, mirror modifier with the bisect option. So without deleting half of the mesh and stuff like that, let's just uh, throw in yet another mirror modifier on top of everything and uh, choose the right axis and choose bisect on the same axis and probably, yeah, we, we have to flip it. Bam, fixed. I really appreciate time and energy that it takes developers to actually spend time on such features because in the long run it really saves some trouble for Blender users like us. Uh, previously we had to collapse the modifier stack and symmetrize everything and after doing that, we naturally lose the access to all our modifiers, which sucked. Not anymore. Okay, the points in my notepad that I really wanted to emphasize and go over once again is the mirror object, or the mirror origin. By default, the object origin, represented by the orange dot over here, serves as the mirror origin as well. And sometimes when you add the modifier, you see the result that, that that looks something like that. All because of the incorrectly placed origin. And if the model has many dependencies, you cannot simply slide uh, the geometry a little bit to fix it. Because the boolean objects will stay in place. Um, a much better decision uh, would be to introduce the mirror object. So I'm gonna select that vertex on the edge of the model place cursor to selected and this will become a new uh, pivot point. So I'll go object set origin, origin to 3D cursor. So that's one of the ways of fixing it, uh, not the only one. And in the wireframe mode I notice uh, that there's something strange going on here. Maybe it's because we should crank up the merge limits but I figured out we have to reorder the modifiers a little bit. And generally speaking, more often than not, it's all about the modifier stack, so it's the first thing to debug. Right, awesome, but much better solution would be to introduce a mirror object once again. It has many benefits over using our object origin. Let's take a look at some of them. So I, I drop the empty and obviously we have to change the axis because previously the model was rotated or something like that so now the mirror line is dynamic and that means that we can not only move it but also rotate it and when combined with the bisect option that becomes a powerful way of sketching out different shapes say when the intercutting geometry is taken out of the equation Oh, and actually there is one more uh, cool thing that I wanted to emphasize. Uh, if you add any kind of greeble, uh, any kind of details that uh, reside on top of your object, you can just copy the mirror modifier from the original object and everything will snap into place. Again, the copy attributes are done should be enabled first, but then you can just control C and copy selected modifiers or for that matter copy all modifiers. Okay, let's get back to rotating the mirror origin because I think it's extremely, extremely impressive. I will go back to the modifiers tab, activate bisect. We don't need flip in this case. Now we can grab the empty object, press R to rotate and just rotate it on the Z axis like that. 
and it uh, doesn't always work as intended. Uh, this method is prone to errors, it produces a lot of artifacts, because intersetting, intercutting geometry is uh, almost always problematic. But by utilizing the merge limit, by taking it a little bit up, uh, you can kill some of these artifacts, and that is actually great for sketching, for blocking out the shape. We quickly created some, some kind of, I don't know what is it, maybe an iron? I have no idea, it looks cool though. And once again, a quick tip for easier grouping would be to create one more empty object. I usually try to position uh, empties right above the mesh, in most cases, and then it's a matter of selecting all the objects, including the, the mirror object, and then shift clicking on the, on, the, on the object that would become the parent, right click, parent, object. By doing it we are essentially binding these objects to gizmo, including the mirror object, uh, for easier rotation and scaling, all kind of transformations. It may not seem like a big deal when you have just a few objects in your scene, but imagine, imagine something of a greater scale. Uh, imagine thousands object plus. Then it will make perfect sense to have everything as organized as possible. Uh, this parenting trick. Goodness gracious, parenting trick. This really helps to avoid headaches. Here I want to show a quick example from the robo scene. This is the lens group. The lens and the lamp group, I should have said. There are a few subgroups here, parented to their own object. And in turn, uh, every object on this layer, including these subgroups, uh, is parented to, to the master parent. Otherwise, it would be such a pain to move anything, because everything is mirrored. And not only that, but it has a lot of dependencies, a lot of other modifiers. So here we go. Here is a custom parent object that I created just for this occasion. And another thing that drives me crazy is relationship lines uh, that just clutter the viewport. I hate it so much. Uh, so wh what I usually do is uh, I try to disable it to unclutter the interface a little bit. So that's how we roll when we have thousands of kid bash objects to babysit. Alright, yes, another thing that I really wanted to show before we can call it a day is multiple axis symmetry. That's one more way of utilizing the mirror modifier for, say, for the radial symmetry effects. So here I modeled a quarter of the detail and utilizing the mirror modifier, we mirrored it on the x-axis the merge checkbox should be turned on to remove the seam, like that. And this part of the geometry should be really aligned to the mirror plane, basically to create a, a proper connection where the real geometry touches the virtual double. The next step to complete the model would be to mirror it on Y as well. Now uh, every change that you commit to the original portion of the mesh will get transferred to all the mirrored parts, that speeds up the workflow tremendously for details that show radial symmetry, but one thing to keep in mind is that if you want to use subdivision surface modifier on top of it, and chances are you want to use it, uh, there are different ways in which we can combine the modifiers within the stack. The first one would be to keep the subdivision surface on top, or rather as the last modifier. This way it will have a proper circular shape, and if we do it other way around, the shape of this object will be pretty strange, uh, because the continuity will be broken. If the subdivision modifier goes before mirroring, uh, it basically will operate on only this uh, quarter of the mesh, and the edges won't be subdivided correctly, as a circular shape should be subdivided. Well, tweaking the merge limits will help to some extent, um, but the problem won't go away so easily. So it's much better to reorder modifiers like that. Alright, awesome. Thanks for sticking around for so long. That's much appreciated. The next paper cut that I wanted to talk about is flipped normals. Allow me to introduce the teapots. 
I got tired of companion cubes, of blenders, so let us try something new. So imagine that you modeled only the half of the teapot and now you want to mirror it. What you do is basically select every vertex, Shift D to duplicate it, snap 3D cursor to the mirror line, press Ctrl M and define the axis, Z in this case. Now the vertices along the seam should be probably merged. In order to do that, let's select every vertex by pressing A, then right click, merge vertices by distance, and in the lower left corner of the screen we can define the distance. Let's take it up a notch. But even though it's a solid mesh, now we see some strange shading going on. Uh, what actually happened is that when we mirrored the part of the mesh, we also flipped the normals, and that doesn't happen with the mirror modifier. It fixes the normals automatically, but when we use not uh, the modifier but the standard Blender modeling tool, the mirror one, we get flipped polygons. It's pretty easy to fix. I'm gonna go mesh, normals, recalculate outside, or recalculate inside for that matter, depending on what you need. So that's a quick hack to get around this paper cut. Well, pretty cool. Pretty cool overall. I really think we should use teapots more often. They fold beautifully. They slide. They decimate into nothingness and disappear from existence. And then they're gone. Poof. Well, symmetry is overrated. Sometimes it's worth breaking the symmetry. It can get boring very quickly. Usually dirty rag helps. Thanks for watching, that was Gleb Alexandrov for CreativeShrimp.com and this is the 2.80 update of the hard surface modeling video course for Blender.